Hello, it's Dermatology Day. It is week three. It is the summer of 2022. Voice is a little rough shape today, so I apologize in advance. All right, where have we been? We've been talking about the language of dermatology. We've talked about a macule is a skin lesion that is flat, smooth on the surface. It is less than one centimeter in size. We said one centimeter is about the size of a AAA battery, the diameter of a AAA battery, the bottom of it. A patch is the same thing. It's a smooth skin lesion. It's bigger, equal to or bigger than one centimeter. Papule is a raised bump that is less than one centimeter in size. Plaque is a raised bump that is one centimeter or greater in size and these plaques have a well-defined border and they're flat okay more language next one is important this is a lichenification so this is if you look at the skin if you ever looked at your skin with a magnifying glass when you're a kid it's it's magnified that's what this looks like the the pattern of your skin the kind of cobblestone appearance of your skin is greatly accentuated with this it looks a little like tree bark um, don't confuse this with a plaque lichenification is raised lesion a plaque is a raised lesion as well a plaque has very well defined borders lichenification does not it's hard to tell where it starts and stops sometimes and um, yeah, everything I said, um, it looks kind of like the rock man thing, I think he, he's called. Looks kind of like that. Here's what it really looks like. Perfect example uh, of someone with a latex allergy, which is a, what called a contact dermatitis. And you can see that it looks like he's got, we've got a magnifying glass on him. Uh, the skin markings are greatly accentuated. That's because there's fluid underneath here at the dermal epidural junction and it's raising it up but it's hard to tell exactly where it starts and where it stops there's not very well defined borders here this is a lichenified lesion okay here's another one uh, that is raised kind of this one's here you can tell where it starts and stops but here you can't uh, so this is this is lichenified lesion in someone with lsc like in simplex chronicus, and there's, yeah, there's fluid underneath there that pushes up and kind of magnifies the skin. What can cause lichenification? Eczemas, uh, the eczematous dermatoses. Uh, we'll learn that eczematous dermatoses or eczemas, have, if we have, I forget if we already talked about this, but eczema is really not a disease in and of itself. It's a description of a skin finding that you see. Uh, there's a bunch of different diseases that cause eczematous type lesions, uh, like the atopic dermatitis, the allergic contact dermatitis, the irritant contact dermatitis. Um, psoriasis sometimes presents uh, with, with eczematous lesions, although they eventually become plaques, but they can start out as lichenified lesions. Uh, LSC can cause it. Pemphigus vulgaris can start as a like kinification. Only the the skin magnifications actually burst and start bleeding. We said PV. That's the pole volter, right? That's the really bad one. That's a autoimmune attack against desmosomes. It has a positive Hansen's and Nikolsky sign. I would make a note card of this. These are rare diseases, but they are the blistering diseases. You should know. Most common of the blistering diseases is bullous pemphigoid. We talked about that's an attack against hemidesmosomes. They look fairly similar. You can't, it's kind of hard to tell them apart. So I would have to give you some, if I was going to put two answer choices in there, I'd have to give you some information to help you make that selection. Um, here is a, a patient with psoriasis that's starting with a lichenified lesion which is quite red or erythematous or erythemic looking. Okay, how about a nodule? This can get a little complicated. Uh, nodules are round 
They are solid. They're hard. Uh, that's the key with those. Cysts are round. Um, those are fairly solid, but they're not hard. They're squishy. They're resilient. Uh, nodules are greater than one centimeter. Papules are less than one centimeter. So papules just like a little nodule. How about a nodule versus a plaque? That's easy. Nodule is round and hard. A plaque is flat. It's typically hard as well, but it's typically more superficial. But nodule is hard and round. Plaque is flat. How about a nodule versus a cyst? Eh, kind of confusing, but not really. You have to be able to feel it, though. I mean, we can't tell. Is that hard as a rock or is it squish, squishy? That's a sebaceous cyst. And it's really, really squishy. He's had several of these removed in the past, you can see. Um, so if it's soft and squishy, it's a cyst. And it's filled, if you've seen the pimple popper on TV, you've seen her pop these things. It's filled with a fluid or cut into them and uh, semi-fluid uh, comes out of these things. And they're said to be, the key word is resilient which means springy and stiff. Nodules are rock hard. Okay, there's a nodule, rock hard, um, and there's more of a, well, that's a plaque versus a nodule. Uh, nodules, so lot, if you get a really, really big nodule, sometimes people call it a tumor. Um, I've heard people called cysts tumors as well. So tumors, not really the greatest word uh, to use. If you're going to use it, you should really use it for a large nodule. So if you're going to say a tumor, it shouldn't be a lipoma, which is squishy. That's not really a tumor. Not, not, it's a nodule, so it's really rock hard. The surfaces of nodules can be all types. They can be smooth. They can be warty. They can be crater-like. Nodules can be submerged, so you can barely feel them. But when you do grab under the skin, they are rock hard. There's a classic nodule sticking up there. Um, now you would have to squeeze these to see what they are. They look a little bit squishy. That's lymphadenopathy, but the doctor found, palpated them. They're really quite firm and hard, um, so therefore they're better described as nodules. If they were scoffed and squishy, then you would call them cysts. And this was lymphadenopathy from a patient with breast cancer. So just like papules, nodules result from inflammatory filtrates being produced. The neoplasms, wild cell growth, a buildup of cells, a buildup of uric acid, metabolic deposits in someone with gout. They typically be begin in the subcutaneous tissue or even the dermis and work their way up. Here's some classic ones. So these are uric acid crystals uh, from a patient with gout called uric acid tophi. And you've probably learned about gout already, so we're not going to cover that in this short class but gout. Okay, more nodule examples. So keloids, little balls of scar, we'll look at, picture of that in a minute. Uric acid we talked about. Rheumatoid nodules, basal cell carcinoma, uh, some metastatic disease, cancers can pop up as nodules. Lymphadenopathy, we just saw an example of that. Uh, xanthoma and xanthoma palpebrum. Uh, we've looked at that before in the past. Uh, there is interesting, talk about a reaction. So when she's a little baby, she had her ear pierced, no problem. She turned 18, wanted to pierce her ear two more times. Wicked keloids formed after the near, after the ear piercings. Um, palpate them, super rock hard. So these are nodules, but they're keloids. Keloids are nodules. Patient with rheumatoid arthritis and classic rheumatoid nodules. Uh, in the dips and pips. Basal cell carcinoma, you'd have to palpate. It looks kind of squishy, but it palpated hard and firm, so it was a nodule. 
right, last subject, rashes. So in dermatology, a rash is called an exanthem. And a rash is nothing but an outbreak of many, many skin lesions that are usually one of two types or both together. Usually papules, little bumps, or flat bumps. But they usually don't get bigger than one centimeter in size. Uh, and these little bumps, they occur over a large portion of the body, like the entire arm. It doesn't have to be. It, you, can have a, you can have a rash over a little fairly tiny area, but it's, it's, it can't be one little papule. That's not a rash. It's got to be over a, an area uh, of certain size. Um, often results from an inflammation uh, stemming from an autoimmune or infectious process down below. Um, so the word exanthem, when you're writing your report to the dermatologist, your patient has a maculopapular erythemic exanthem. Uh, exanthem always comes last, and that tells the dermatologist it's a rash. And then the preceding words describe what type of lesions the patient has. Um, so this guy has macules. These are all flat. Um, so this is a rash of macules. So it's a macular, we don't say rash because we're in dermatology, so it's a macular exanthem. We could describe it further. Um, it's These are red macules, so we could say it's erythematous, an erythematous macular exanthem. See how that is? What if they're itchy? If they're super itchy, then we could say pruritic erythematous macular exanthem. See how that works? It's very easy. Uh, what causes these exanthems? Viruses, especially in kids, notorious for causing these widespread rashes. Uh, measles, rubiola, uh, rubella, German measles. This is actually a case of German measles here, a kid who was unvaccinated. Uh, varicella, chickenpox, roseola, fifth disease. So these viruses cause reactions under the skin, and you get this. It's red, so it's erythematous. Uh, there's raised lesions, and there's flat lesions, so it's a maculopapular exanthem. I think I jumped a little ahead of my slides, but... Um, so, yeah. So... An exanthem that consists of numerous papules is a papular exanthem. If it contains a mix of macules and papules, you have a maculopapular exanthem. Alphabetically, M become, comes before P, so they typically say maculopapular exanthem. I mean, you could say papulomacular exanthem. Wouldn't be wrong, but that's not the custom for that. And then the red, so we can add red in there. So this case is erythematous, there's macule, so maculo, and there's papules, papular, exanthem. And then, as I said, we can, if it's itchy, we could add that into the mix. Uh, so it's a pruritic, erythematous, maculopapular exanthem is an itchy red rash. See how that works? There's another patient with measles, mix of macules and papulars, plus their red and itchy, so that's a erythemic, pruritic, maculopapular exanthem. You know that's going to be on the test to make sure you can differentiate those. All right, let's finish up with a wheel. So uh, a wheel is a raised lesion. Uh, typically, once it gets going, it gets bigger than one centimeter. Um, so, I mean, a raised lesion greater than one centimeter, why isn't that a plaque? Uh, well, it's not because it's so superficial and it's filled with fluid. Um, so that, and it's well-defined, so it still kind of looks like a plaque. Plaques don't, are not fluid-filled. Um, so that's the key. So it's an elevated, fluid-filled plaque, really, or papule if it's less than one centimeter. Uh, but it's still called a wheel. If you see the fluid, don't call it a plaque. Uh, it's a it's a wheel. If it's filled with pus, if it's green or yellow looking, um, then it's called a pustule, no matter what size it is. Okay, um, These are superficial. 
So they're not deep enough to be a cyst. They're not hard enough to be a nodule. Uh, the other key with these things is they don't live very long. Um, they're evanescent. Put that on your vocabulary list if you don't know what that is. Uh, they're characteristically evanescent, meaning they're short-lived. So they don't last more than 24 hours or so. Sometimes a couple hours and they're gone. Um, a cyst would never do that. A cyst will be there until you get it, uh, get it removed. So, uh, and then unlike a cyst, a cyst is not itchy. These things are very itchy. So that's another way to differentiate it from a cyst. So evanescent, like evanescence, Amy Lee of evanescence. She was kind of short-lived, right? She had kind of a one-hit wonder type, or one CD. I guess a record, whatever you want to say. That's how I remember that. Uh, let's see. So what about, where's one of those wheels? So we got one wheel here. What if we have a bunch of wheels that are happening all over this area? What's a rash of wheels called? So a rash of wheels is called a eudicaria, or eudicaria is a rash of wheels. There's some AKAs. Uh, lay people typically call them hives. Uh, but it's a eudicaria, or if you want to be perfectly technical, it's a eudicarial exanthem is what you should should say, but people don't really say that. Um, so a lesion, a single lesion within the wheel is still, or a single lesion within the eudicaria is still called a wheel. It's like we could see a wheel here and a wheel here, and there's a wheel here. But all these wheels together, that's called a eudicaria or eudicarial exanthem. And um, yeah, there's another little guy who's got, uh, got a eudicarial exanthem on his face. They, his mom would say, oh my God, my kid's got hives. Uh, but it's the same thing. They're typically itchy as well, so you could call it a pruritic eudicarial exanthem. Hives. Uh, different causes of eudicaria, well, they allergic reactions to some unknown allergen that you've come into with. Um, it could be an autoimmune disorder. It could be undiagnosed cancer. Uh, could present as these as a weird uh, eudicaria exanthem that starts popping up. Some people get stressed. My wife gets really stressed. She breaks out uh, with a uh, eudicaria exanthem. Sometimes they come for no reason at all. All right, there is the rare bird. Um, that's called a vermilion flycatcher, and they're not supposed to be in this part. Uh, they're not even supposed to be in California. It's more of a kind of in Mexico, Central America, and South America bird. Sometimes they get up into Texas and Arizona a little bit. It's really rare to see them. All bird photographers were after this thing. Uh, it's, I think it's the first uh, season it's ever been here. All right. That's all I got for you. We will see you later.